Hey there, folks. Welcome back. This is the What Have I Become chapter. Right now we're on slide 27, and let's see if we can't move forward with it, all right? So what we want to do right now is focus on two problems that we originally created for this chapter. It's number two, which is how do humans impact climate change? So what is our role in that? What are we doing to produce that? And also, how do toxins or pollutants affect our bodies? So we're going to try to learn a little bit more about these two things as we go along. Join me for the ride. All right, to better understand problem number two and number three, we're going to do a virtual lab that has us thinking about these questions. Like, how do population changes of aquatic invertebrates, organisms like you see here, things that live underwater, aquatic, and invertebrate means no backbone, so things without a spine or a backbone that live underwater, like clams and these things called nymphs or aquatic insects, things that live under underwater that are insects. We want to learn about the populations of these organisms based on the water quality, so the safeness of the water. It says we're going to investigate the effects of acid rain on different species of these aquatic species, these aquatic invertebrate organisms. We're going to learn about acid then, and so we need to do a little bit of background research. We need to learn a little before we start this lab so we understand what's called acid rain and understand what pH is or what pH levels are. So that'll be one of the homework activities, and slide 29 shows you. So you'll have a homework activity before you start this awesome virtual lab in class. So before we do this in class with our teams, we'll do a little bit of research. And this research has you learning about something called an ion, has you learning about acid, and acid rain. So we'll learn about what an ion is. It says answer the first four questions only. So you're going to watch an Ed Puzzle video and learn about ions. And that's going to help you prepare for the lab, this lab. You'll also watch this Ed Puzzle video and learn about acids and what acids are. So we understand a little more about this lab. And then finally, what is acid rain? You'll watch this Ed Puzzle video. You'll watch each of these videos above. And then you'll respond and answer the questions in each video. You'll write them in your notebook or on a separate sheet of paper and then place it in your what have I become pocket. You'll know when this is homework because we'll talk about it in class and I'll get you set up. Don't worry. But it's all geared to help you better understand this awesome lab where you're going to be studying some species, clams, leeches, or dragonfly nymph, or how about a fairy shrimp and a stonefly nymph? Or how about we'll study the effect on side swimmers and dragonfly nymphs and stonefly nymphs? But we have different species in these tanks. We're going to study something called pH, and we're going to study this thing called carbonic acid. And what happens when we add this to the water tank? We're going to study all this soon. So we're basically going to study what happens when we take acid and put it into the environment of an organism and change its pH level. When we're done with this virtual lab, it'll represent our evidence one of a new hell activity. So we're going to go back to hell. But it'll be number two this time, our second HEL, or Hypothesis Evidence Link Worksheet. And it'll represent, so this virtual lab will represent evidence one and it'll be a part of us studying how pollution is or isn't a threat to cells. So we're going to study a lot about pollution this time with health. All right. Now, after we do the lab, once we're done, we probably have some remaining questions, or we may still not be fully sure of what acids and bases are. So I'd like to take this opportunity to use this little activity here and we'll do two observations, two simple observations in class. Or if you missed that day, you can use this slide to help. 
but it says elements are based on the number of blank in an atom. And if you add or remove blank or blank, you make an blank with blank or blank overall charge. That's a lot of blanks. Let's figure out how to fill these in. All right, join me for our statement of understanding activity, which is what we call these kind of worksheets. In case you didn't remember, way back when, when we started this chapter, we studied climate change and how carbon dioxide affects climate change. We went to this virtual lab and we filled out our very first statement of understanding. We also talked about how many scientific things the statement of understanding, or the SOUs, allow us to do. It allows us to argue, identify problems, model, which we're going to be doing soon, investigating, collecting data, and explaining things, all using this activity. This was the original scientific problem with our very first SOU. It says, what is happening in the, in the atmosphere to cause climate change? And we came up with data, we explored, we filled it in. You can see we have lots of different examples of how we completed it. And when at the end we had a statement of what we understood, what we learned about climate change and carbon dioxide. So now we're just going to use it in a different situation to understand what makes different elements and acid and bases. So that's our scientific problem this time with this statement of understanding. Let's go to the simulation and see if we can't do that. So we want to learn what makes different elements. I'm going to add a neutron. It goes to the center where the nucleus is. I'm going to add an electron. Ah, oh, look, it likes to stay on the outside in these things called orbitals or shells. I'm going to add a proton. It just became an element. I took a proton, added it to the center before it's not really an element. It, you, you notice it's not on the periodic table. I take a neutron away, I take an element away, or an electron. And no element appears to exist for this. But if I take a proton, we have hydrogen. If I add a second one, it's now helium. If I add another proton, it changes to a lithium element. If I add another, it becomes beryllium. What do you think it's going to become if I add a fifth proton. Which element? Did you get it right? It's boron. So it went from hydrogen to helium. Then we added a third proton. It became lithium. A fourth proton. It became beryllium. A fifth proton. It became boron. What happens if I add a sixth proton? Can you tell what element it's going to be? Did you get it? I hope you did. Notice that every time we add a proton, we change the element. Or if I remove one, we change the element. We are now ready to fill in the very first blank of our first observation in our statement of understanding. So back on slide 32. If you have this worksheet, great. If you don't, make sure you ask me for it next time you see me so I can get you this worksheet and so you can start filling this out so you get a better understanding of what makes elements and better understand this problem of what makes things acidic or basic. All right, question number one, it says elements are based on the number of, well, right here we have a great picture of it, protons. So protons make, and the number of protons determine the element on the periodic table. Next it says if you add or remove blank or blank, you make something. So let's learn about this now. If you add or remove blank or blank, you make something. All right, let's see if we can figure that one out. So follow along. So we add a proton, and we made a ion. Notice this positive here. This suggests that this atom is a positive ion, an ion with an overall positive charge. A positive charge. See right here? It's saying it overall has a positive charge. Now if I add a neutron, let's see if the ion changes. Nope, still a positively charged ion. Let's see if I add an electron, what might happen? It's now neutral. It has a zero charge. Notice it's now called an atom again. If I take this away, it has an overall positive charge, and it's not called an atom, it's called a hydrogen ion with an overall positive charge. If I add the electron, presto, it now has a zero charge, and we now once again call it a hydrogen atom with a neutral charge or a zero charge. Let's add an electron, a second one. Ah, 
Now the charge, we have two negatives to one positive. So we have one more negative than positive. That means we have an overall negative one charge, and we call it a negative ion. So it's a hydrogen ion with an overall negative charge. What do you think is going to happen if I add another proton? Well, if I do add another proton, we'd have two positive charges and two negative. What do you think it's going to form? Did you get it right? It's neutral. It has a zero charge because one negative and one positive balance each other out. If we have two positive charges and two negative, they balance out. There's not one more positive or not, there is not one more negative. They're balanced and equal. So there's overall zero or neutral charge on an atom. I added a second proton. It became a new element, helium. What happens if I give it an extra proton? That's going to be three protons. Ah, it became a positive charged ion again. So there's now three positive charged protons and only two electrons. So it now has an overall positive because there's more positive charge than negative. So it's a positively charged lithium ion. You probably guessed it already, but if I add another electron, goes to that outer orbital on the outside, and it's now once again neutral. If I take one away, it becomes positive. If I add an extra, it becomes overall negative because there's negative. Anytime there's, an, there's more electrons than protons, it becomes a negatively charged ion. And anytime we have more protons than electrons, it is a positively charged ion. Let's see if we can't fill in the blank on the next question for statement of understanding. So what makes things acidic or basic? Well, I'll help you a little with this, but let's see if we can't figure it out. It says if you add or remove, that's right, protons or the other thing with the charge, the negatively charged electrons, and I'll just do an E with a negative, you make an, and the word is, it's an atom with a charge, it's an ion with a overall positive or negative charge. Now, believe it or not, anything that has an overall positive charge, we can refer to as something that is acidic. Things with positive charges overall tend to be acidic. And then things that are basic generally are called, or that have negative ionic charges, things that are negative ions, we generally call bases. And so we can add our third observation, where it is a positively charged ion equals an acid, and a negative charged ion equals a base. Just like you see here, negatively charged ion we'd call a base, and a positively charged ion we'd call an acid. Which hopefully fills in some blanks, because when we added the carbonic acid to the tank, when we added it, we may have not really understood what the acid was, what carbonic acid is. But what it really is doing is adding positively charged ions to the water. So we're adding a bunch of a positively charged atoms lots of positively charged atoms into the water, specifically this one. This right here is a classic acid, hydrogen ions with a positive charge. All we did when we added carbonic acid to the tank, all we were really doing is adding lots of these atoms to the water. And that had a very strong overall effect on the water tank. These species were affected. These three species that live, these aquatic invertebrates, did have an effect uh, or did have a response to the acid rain or the carbonic acid. Their populations did change. Now I'll let you just remember what happened in the lab in class. I don't want to ruin the surprise if you haven't done it, but in class we'll find out exactly what effect it had on the population, if it was positive or negative. Until then, I hope you feel a little stronger and better understanding of what makes an acid and a base. And I hope you feel better about the whole virtual lab experience. All right. 
stay tuned for next time. We will continue with What Have I Become?